What are your thoughts and opinions on, okay, so uh, on people who say that, well, I don't expect those Korean high school students no. to understand yeah, what blackface is because of how they're raised in society and not just in reference to these Korean students or anyone who does it um, who's outside of the U.S., so to speak, or the Western world. Um, um, what are your thoughts on that? I think that that's a bunch of crap um, because they don't treat that little, they don't treat that little test they got to take like that. <laughs> they don't treat it. They don't treat it like that. They become mm-hmm. very aware of what they need to know so that they can get the results that they need so that they can be fully aware. I think it's a, it's a case of awareness, being aware of the context of blackface. I think that if you can't do it every, if you, if you can't and or don't do something every day and you feel comfortable doing it at least three times a week, then you should probably, you know, just like when you want to buy a product, I do a lot of research and reading reviews and things like that before I buy, you know, a high ticket item. The only time that I would say that is if it was Halloween because people can like actually dress up and be something that they're not on Halloween, you know? Well, for them and their school, this was a time to dress up. It was like a special day to dress up. So it's kind of like, oh, an occasion like Halloween. Um, I wouldn't, like I said earlier, I still will probably want to know why, like, why? why did you dress up as this? Like, I want to know that people are aware of like the decisions that they make. Any kids that I teach in Korea, in any country that I go to, they're going to learn about the black experience, honey. They're going to learn about, I want to learn about you, but I also want you to learn about me as well and how we do it, how we did it when I was younger. And just to give you perspective and to give you a little knowledge, give you something different, a little depth you know, it's all about awareness. Yeah, that's also another thing to think about. Like also it goes deeper than just these high school students. It talks about a little, it, I think it reveals something about Korean culture and society because not only did these kids decide they wanted to dress up in themselves, their parents probably were aware of it, bought the material, helped them get the materials. Not only the parents, the parents, but the teachers, yes. the, the whole school administration. This picture got into the yearbook that this school published. Right, right. The principals. Like, was there no one that was aware of anything? Yeah, like maybe we shouldn't do this. And that's that's when I go back to um, I go back to being aware of like what you're doing anyway. Like, like you said, it going past the principal and actually getting published in a book, like no one had any awareness or any standard or guidelines on what, what was going to be acceptable or unacceptable in this space. So that, and I think something the else thing mm-hmm. to think, Uh, like cross-cultural communication and identity. So I do understand that Korea is not the Western world. I've lived in Korea for two years. It's totally different. People are the same everywhere in reference to people are people. But just how people move through society Mm -hmm. and how people think. And how people even view the world can be completely different from yours. Like we all all experience joy, sadness, love, how we express those things to other people can be totally different. And um, yeah, Korea is a different, different world. And I know that Korean people may not understand the historical content or, or never be taught about it. Actually, I was on a television program on Korean TV on a major network 
talking about this in a panel discussion. And one of my friends, I sent it to one of my friends and she's a white American. She grew up in Kansas. Yeah. And she was like, Roya, I had to Google blackface. I'm feel so naive. I didn't even know what it was. She's American. Yeah. She's lived her whole life and she didn't know. And like, she would consider me one of her best friends. Mm. And she has no idea what blackface is. People in the West are still uneducated. That's why it's still a controversial issue yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people still do it here. So I don't feel like I can hold Korea to the same standard as I would as I if, if they were American high school students. Absolutely. It would be a whole different story. Absolutely. Like, and I also... The type of person I am, I always extend grace and compassion first Mm -hmm. to people. I honestly don't believe that those high school students intended any disrespect. Yeah, I saw that meme and was like, thought it was hilarious. Just like when I saw the meme. Right. Like that was entertaining. And they wanted to do something that was culturally relevant for this year, for their school and their yearbook. I think that that's really cool that they even chose that out of any everything that's happened in the world. They chose this meme. You know, it was really funny. So many people duplicated that meme mm-hmm. all over the yeah. world. And they decided to do it. The issue is just that they did blackface, and blackface is problematic. And that's all it is. Yeah, it, it really is. I think... Um I don't think that I don't they think were any malice. that. Yeah, I don't think it was done out of malice at all. I think it was done out of just them being unaware and a little naive about a lot of things because they do live in their own world. Like they have their yeah. own world yeah. that they're in, and they don't have to worry about having blackface every day. And whenever they, how often, girl, you know how many Koreans we meet. Being in Korea, that ain't never seen nobody that looked like us. I know. I'm like the first black friend, the first black person that they've interacted with, like ever, ever. These like they these sixty year old people. The yeah, <laughs> you know. And we're not, I'm like I'm not talking about someone who's like you know lived through the wars and that. Right. I'm talking about people age and younger. Like my friend, they just. Like, yeah, I've seen, like, people, like, oh, yeah, I've seen people and I've gone to Itaewon and it's like, wow. (laughs) Right. You know, it's a different, like, 99% of the population is Korean. Yeah. And, like. (laughs) 99. (laughs) Yeah, 99.9, probably. I don't know. (laughs) It's not everybody. It's a sea (laughs) of Korean. (laughs) But yeah, I honestly, I feel like it, it was, it was naive. It was unawareness. It was them just being in their own world. Yet you never, to go back to Sam for a second, I guess to, um, I guess in a perfect world, if he was to say something in a perfect world, it would have been better to, or more appropriate possibly to um, first and foremost, blur their faces. Secondly, make it a moment of education, like to educate, like, and be very clear, like, Hey guys, I really want to educate you guys on this. This is a ritual that we do in my country. And it's not to be made like a mockery. Like it's not, it's not a funny thing. And I would appreciate it if you would respect that in a sense, like make it a true educational moment, like a moment to educate people on the why, when, what, for what, because Mm -hmm. I think they will be able to um, understand and get the perspective on why it really offended him in a way because like I said it comes directly from his culture so Mm -hmm. I'm sure he felt a way and then the blackface part so the way it came out look you know what I'm saying if you can't stand the heat get out of the kitchen that's how I feel about it also on another end but you know being in his position in uh, 
in TV and in, as a public figure, it's just something yeah, it's, you can do and some things you can do, especially. It's interesting to have an opinion and run my mouth on this podcast because who am I? How's it going to affect my life? Right. I'm still living, you know, um, but for Sam, that's not the case. Right, right. I know it would have, if I would have done the same exact thing, the same exact words that Sam did, it wouldn't have gotten, nobody would have said shit. It probably would have been shared by a few Americans, you know, here or there, or some, you know, like possibly maybe some of my folks back in Korea probably would have said something. Even if it was, even if it was, I had the Korean and English, like the same exact post. If it would have been on your IG, your Facebook, my IG, my Facebook, it wouldn't have meant anything. You know what I'm saying? So it was just the, I think they were really, um, the Korean, um, I think Korean people were um, taken aback that that the Korean translation and the English translation, one didn't add up to them. But because if they, if he, if you would have put the English translation and try and tried to directly translate it in Korean, it probably it sounded a lot different, but in all actuality, I believe that was about the same. <laughs> it really was to me, you know, and I'm, yeah. it's just, it's perspective, it's, it's point of view, it's language, it's position. It's a lot of things that go into this because he said it, now it means something, you know, but it would, um, if I see myself, I have to, I think sometimes we have to look at things as a teachable moment and be very open to create teachable moments and educate people. If, if, if you have a strong point of view about something, educate someone on that versus like, bah, 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 you did this and you did that. No, it's more like, look, we got to step in with the compassion and the patience for yourself. Because in one, one way they could truly not know truly because everyone's point of view is so different. I'm definitely learning that. You got, like, everyone's point of view is extremely different. So that that's how I that's how I see the whole situation. But, like I said earlier, Sam is now officially famous. I love to see him be in his truth and stand in his truth. But, you know, you can't be in a public eye with a little controversy. Hey! Now that- I wonder how going to affect his career i think it depends on how he approach he moves forward i really don't want him to move forward in an ass ass kissing way i want him to move forward still in his truth being open to educate on why he felt that way about it i want him to be open to educate and still stand in his truth about why it it what is not right and why it's not right for him and why he felt uncomfortable with it. You know what I'm saying? Because he is a part of pop culture in Korea at this moment. So I believe if he moves forward in his career, open to educate and, and truly this could be a very big turn in his career in Korea or wherever he decides, whatever he decides to do for him to continue to do what he's been doing, but in a different way. I'm not, I, I can't really put it in words on how he can transform this um, situation and create something different out of this. I'm not very sure on what that looks like, but there is a way for him to come back and be like, look, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I fully support Sam, what he, whatever he decides to do. I fully support him. You got my love? Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I think I totally support Sam, too. I stand with him. I really appreciate him as a person. Um, but I also think cancel culture is real. Yeah. And I haven't seen any single Korean 
celebrities speak up on Sam's behalf. Right. And that's touching too. He got to know who he working with. <laughs> you got to know who yeah, working with. It's sad. And, and, but that, that just also shows how big Korean cancel culture is. I believe that he so. definitely has a chance to come back from this a lot stronger. It's going to take some resilience. It's going to take some, um, it's going to take some resilience. It's going to take him being in a place where like he really has to stand and be truly in his power and in his strength, you know, like seriously. So he's just, to me, he's just in the process of leveling up. You can't get too comfortable working in a, in, where you are kind of out of place. You can't get too comfortable. This got him right back on his toes. And I believe that he's going to come back a lot stronger, but definitely come back in his power Mm -hmm. because mm -mm. there's so many other things that he can do and places that he can go. Like something like this, like it's a, it's some Dave Chappelle type stuff because I believe that um, other, you know, these brands and TV shows, they can, they can help build your brand as far as getting you in front of a lot of people. Yet, if you're willing to do the work and get in front of a lot of people on your own, then the the reward, the return, and the and the reward is much better. He definitely <laughs> needs he definitely needs to you know use this time to prepare himself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and be ready to come back so much stronger. Because as you can see, they not playing with him at any time of the day. Not on Instagram, not on Facebook, not on you. They not playing. They not playing. So I saw a video that you shared recently. Which one? Um, on Facebook. The um, where you were talking about why you left Korea. Yes, I just posted that like yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to ask you, how do you feel, like, what are your thoughts and opinions about Korea and where Korea is about the the attitude toward Black people and people of color? Hmm. Okay, so if you haven't, the video that she's talking about is on my Whitney Soul page on Facebook. I tried to post it on Instagram. I also have it on my YouTube. Um, So I really wanted to just be like, this is why I left Korea and really be honest about it so that people can either relate to it or just be in some type of dialogue or like, what do you think about this? But I was just truly just being honest about why I left. And for me, from my experience, I believe, I believe that people see black people. I know that whatever they see on TV, that is their baseline knowledge of people of color. So if they're, you know, looking at, um, I don't know, real housewives of Atlanta for some reason, you know, on Netflix. That's a popular show. It is popular. And then they meet me and you and as two black girls, they're probably going to have this preconceived notion of that we're going to be somewhat like them. I also believe that they're very quickly, very, very impressionable, meaning that they... Once you show them something different or explain and educate them on something different, they change quickly, very, Mm -hmm. very quick to change. Um, I've never um, encountered a Korean or talked to a Korean um, and said that like, um, oh, I think you're a bad person. Most of of the Koreans, young or old or whatever, I've been... Uh, very open with them and I've allowed them to ask questions. I like to ask questions too. Even with some of my employers, I, I'm very open and straightforward with them about what I expect and like what I want. 
and being able to collaborate in that space. Um, so because I don't want them to like, you know, take advantage of me. So I need to be able to speak up for myself. I need to do this and I need to do that and be these certain type of ways. This is why I was working there. And over time, it was just exhausting. <laughs> it was really exhausting. But I also think that it's something that I need to be able to cultivate and just kind of be independent in what I'm doing and how I'm doing things, truly. So mm -hmm. that's where I am. But overall, I believe Korea, like my experience in the country itself was a great experience. The issues that I had for me was more connected to my growth as a woman and my growth as a human being. That, that was my thing. That was what I wrestled with while being there. And I knew that I wanted to be more in an environment that, was, that I think is healthier for me. And that, that was my thing. And right now, while being in India, I feel like I'm in an environment that's more healthy based on like what's available to me. And that's mostly food related because like what you eat directly, um, yeah, yeah. It, what you eat directly, like um, contributes to like how you think and feel. So being in Korea, that wasn't a wholesome environment. What I do miss is the gym Jobang. I can't, I can't lie. Oh, yeah. I, miss, I mean, I'm, I miss it in Korea, but I don't go there because of COVID. I did go to one in Busan, though. It was really nice. I don't know if it's called the Paradise, that chain. Oh, <gasps> it was so beautiful. Anyways, um, I was just going to say that I feel like Korea overall has I wouldn't say hmm quite interesting how I want to word this uh I think Korea does have a positive attitude towards foreigners and when I meet Koreans one-on-one -on -one, um and even in groups I am welcomed I've actually never had an experience where I felt that I wasn't welcome as a whole. Maybe there's, yeah. there's, de there's definitely been a person that I felt whose attitudes towards me were negative. Mm -hmm. I, I have encountered those, those individuals, but as a whole, you know, I can, there's just some welcoming people and there's some unwelcoming people in general, but towards me as a black person, Overall, I felt welcomed and loved and accepted mm. and appreciated in Korea. And I feel like underlining everywhere I go when I travel, this is how I'm also treated. Um, I think there's something just about being Black that kind of people understand that there is a struggle that you experience. And so when they see you, they're like, wow. What has she done to put herself here? Who is this? Mm -hmm. I've never seen someone like you here. And I really agree with you when you say like people may have like had a certain idea or a pre preconceived notion of who you are. And actually out of all of my Korean friends, people that I'm close to have told me like Roya, they, they're just really surprised when they meet me. They're like, Roya, you're not like other foreigners. And then I explain it's because I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, you're so different. You're not like this or like that. And it's funny because I have to say it to them because they're surprised and they're wow. not even appreciating that. And they're like, why is that? And I'm like, you know, there's a subculture in America that the black community is a part. Yes, I'm still American, mm -hmm. but like, I move and operate is also still different because I am black. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And they're like, Oh, okay. Like they get it. They're like, yeah, never thought of it like that. Cause I think a lot of times Koreans, they just put all foreigners into a box. Mm -hmm. and even if you're black and they, they may, someone may have like a, an 
also a negative idea of black people they kind of don't separate it so much it's like you're foreign and you're in the foreign category yeah and um people are you know not exposed they really don't have any idea outside of things that they see on movies and through music and so meeting someone and talking and interacting yeah, people I feel have been really accepting of me and I've moved through Korea very pleasantly. Another thing that I notice that happens a lot in Korea and even other parts of the world is people associate Black culture with hip-hop. Yes, hip-hop is a big part of the Black community. Like, I grew up listening to hip-hop. Like, I loved hip-hop. But, like, Black culture and society and how people move and operate, it's so much bigger than hip hop. Like, Girl. I don't think anyone would, well, I, I take that back because people are people. But, you know, I understand that Korea is bigger than K dramas and, and K pop. <laughs> Actually, all, like, a lot of people are introduced to Korea now, especially like Korea is becoming more globalized because of really K-pop has pushed Korea like onto the global map. Like its popularity has made a lot of the world more interested in Korean culture. And like people watch K-dramas. I actually have never watched one. I've been living in Korea two years and I love a lot of things in reference to Korean culture and society and K dramas and K pop are not one of them. And actually a lot of my (laughs) Korean friends also my Korean friends, they don't listen to K pop and they know nothing of K dramas. Mm. And like, that even though there's many Korean people that love K dramas and love K pop, there's so many Korean people that have no idea about that stuff at all. So it's funny, like they're people who can approach me and be like, Oh, do you know about this rapper, this artist, and da 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 in hip hop? And I'm like, No, nah, I'm not really into that. And they're so shocked. And <laughs> Like they know more black about black people and the black experience. Like I don't know my own culture. I'm like, you're really confused about what actual culture means. Girl. If you you can understand black culture and the black community more because you know some hip hop music from the nineties that I don't know. Girl. Like, God bless you. <laughs> uh.